And here comes Ken. <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> He's in moped heaven. Here they both come. <laughs> oh my god. Two kids. Two very big kids. What's that for? You already know, this thing will roar. It's got so much power, it'll roar. It'll roar, roar. Rip your house off the foundation. It's a two stroke. And that one's really bad. Is this thing? 70. It's a 70. Yeah. Shh, don't tell the popo that because it's got to be 49 and under for no license plate, right? That's right, man. <laughs> you don't even have to register this thing, man. I know this 65 miles an hour. You can kill yourself as quick as you want on this one if you're not careful. <laughs> <laughs> it's got so much compression that, that, that Steve was kickstarting it and it broke off the uh, Kickstarter because it's got this high performance engine with a big carb. And who made the chamber on this, Steve? That's uh, Kevin, Devin Beak with MLM. He was the founder. Very cool. Well, let's go inside. And uh, oh, before we go in, you guys know we went to the RV show in Tampa. Oh my right? God! And uh, Chris, Christy, and I have something we want to show you guys. We um, had a little upgrade here on the camper. We traded in. Well, actually, we, we we I did a little gambling down here. You guys know I've been I've been off off the grid a little bit, and uh, I kind of lost this trailer in in my last bet. Uh, so we picked up another one. Let me show what we got. You know the tiny homes have been real popular, so. Babe! <laughs> I'm in the new tiny house. You got a tiny home, honey. We got a tiny home. It's, it's perfect. <laughs> oh, honey, I think you better put a, a tarp on for a roof because we got a little That's rain coming. The skylight. The skylight? Yeah. I like your spirit. A good spirit. I mean, honey. Look at all the shelving. Honey. Lots I, of storage. It's even got a flower box I on know, here. I have a flower box. And a window we can yep. upgrade with in storage. Storage, countertop. Residential style door and, and, and you know, a little paint, a little polish. Right. She'll clean up. No, it's it's a it's a Starlet XL, guys. The RV show was great. Gambling wasn't, but you know we're gonna be okay with this, won't we, honey? That's right. As long as we're we have, be just fine. As long as we have each other. That's right. As long as we have each other in our tiny home, we'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, you see what the collection Steve's got in here, man? I've never nobody's got a collection like he's got. He's got every moped known to man here, and some real high-end ones. Here's a Moto Bikini. Um, look at this thing. Look at this thing. This thing will rip your face off for sure. It's a 75cc two stroke with a big chamber on it. It's an absolute rocket wheelie machine. Then he's got this Cross 50 right here. It's actually a little mi mini dirt bike. That thing's super cool. He's got a general, uh, oh yeah, a general moped. He's got, uh, this looks like a derby. Oof. It's a Giuseppe Beta. You're not going to see one of those in every street corner, okay, guys? You'll probably never see one again, actually. Here's a Sparta. 
Sparta! Sparta! <laughs> you scream Sparta when you're bouncing off the rev limiter doing 65 and someone pulls out in front of you. And then we got a couple of bones over here. We got a nice uh, Piaggio scooter. Come on aside, I'll show you the kick ass scooters you'll ever see. I want to ride this badass yeah. ride right here. Oh, yeah. What is this thing? It's a custom built Tomos, man, with a 47 millimeter metric kit on it. It looks like a fucking Kick rocket ship. Start. It Oops, does all right. Have to edit that part the out. Gronk machine. <laughs> yeah, oh, you're going to have Gronk ride on this thing, right? This is the one, man. Well, uh, you guys going to win the championship this year? Absolutely. That's why we brought Tom down. That was, that was a really good idea. <laughs> I thought he was going to T-bone my truck, man. He's going to send it. Hey, maybe we can upgrade to the chariot trailer. It's like 260 pounds and that thing rips it with him on it. Let's see if we can get him. This thing rip up. <laughs> Thing's ripping. Look at the paint job on this thing, man. I know. It looks go. badass. This is a rocket right here. This one actually got wheels big enough for you. This thing right, yeah. sounds good, man. Oh, yeah. That's a little barker. Makes a big difference with wide tires, bro. Oh, yeah, wow. Why? You can feel the difference on this one. Got the wide tires. I'm going to put on my safety goggles. No, look at that. And there he goes. And here he comes. This is an absolute rocket. <laughs> Did you have fun? We're gonna rip. How's that go again? It's a two-stroke. It's, it's a rip-off. It's a rip-off. Look at this one. Look at this thing. Oh, here we go. This is. It's a Giulietto a Cross 50 Tipo America. You're never going to see another one again, ever, okay? So take a good look, guys. This is the only one left. It's a sole survivor. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. What a cool piece, too, huh? Yeah, I like it. I mean, this, this thing's basically irreplaceable. I mean, you'll, yeah. never, you'll never see another one. Honestly, the, um, this bike here was... What do you do? That thing's cool. So this is a Mitsubishi Silver Pigeon. It was made in the same factory in Japan where they made the Zero Kamikaze planes. Wow. In 1946, we told them you can't make airplanes anymore, but you can make mass transit to build up the country again. So they start using like these little knobs and stuff that came off of the old 
Zero Airplanes. This one was bought by a U.S. serviceman in 1959, brought over here, but you know, looks very militant. Still has the original tool pack here wow. that the guy never used. Dude, that's cool. Just a really cool piece, man. No doubt. You'll never see another one of these again, will you? I don't think so, man. S uh, Silver Pigeon. When's the last time you see one of them? Never, ever. That's and then cool. I'd probably say the other one. Uh, you got an Allstate. This is a Sears. You just sell these at Sears, right? Yes, Allstate? they did. Yeah. That's How a cool best that? for Piaggia. Then we got uh, Benelli Sprint 4V. That, that's a tough looking little moped, man. Yeah. I mean, how'd you like to be a, a, every 13 year old kid's <laughs> dream would be to have one of these so they can take off from home with a headlight on and go meet their girlfriend down, down the street or their buddies, you know, yeah. smoke cigarettes at the sand pit or whatever we did when we were 13, 15 years old, you know? <laughs> 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 and you got a Benelli here. One of my neighbor's kids had one of these. When I was a kid, I had a GT80, had one of those. Then we've got, uh, where's the other? We've got a bunch of different ones in here. This one's worth Beautiful. talking about, though. This is a Moto Guzzi Dingo 50. Wow. So uh, this one say. here has a little Passport de Motocicule that came in from Italy in 1973. Wow. Um, it looks tough. This was imported. It was put in a private uh, museum up in Wisconsin. Never rode since it got here. Look at the body lines on this thing, man. And the only other place we know there's one is uh, for sure is in the Moto Guzzi Museum over in Italy. Yeah, so you're never going to see one of these yeah. ever. Um, that's cool. It was a 1959 Cosmopolitan Motors and Larry Weiss. This was the first Italian bike he brought into the U.S. to distribute. And this one's cool because it's a two-stroke. They also made wow. the Olympia in a four-stroke, uh, which we have in the other one. Look at the lines on the tank. The Italians just had it down, man. The, the lines on the tank swooping into the side cover. Just the, the design is, is beautiful. For a 98cc, man, that's a good-looking bike. She's a little ripper, too, I bet. Yeah. Benelli model 1974. Very cool. That's no. a, you can tell them the story, but that's a Benelli Enduro 1972 that came out in 1978. 180cc was a game changer for Benelli in the Enduro space. But take a good look at that 180cc engine. We got another bike to show you that, uh, that ties into that pretty well. Yeah, it's a good looking little motor. Cool piece. Looks all original too. But Guys, it, this is an extremely rare piece. They only made 200 of these and there's a really cool story behind it. Uh, I'm gonna let you tell the story because I could never, I, I don't want to murder the story, but go ahead. Sure. So in 1968, when they made that other uh, Enduro that you saw, it had a 180 engine. Larry Weiss came over to take a look at that bike. Marco Benelli asked him, hey, how are our mini bikes doing? Larry says, hey, can you make us up with a little more oomph to it? So Marco says, what are you thinking, Larry? And Larry says, totally joking. I point out the Enduro and says, what about that big 180 engine? So lo and behold, um, they agreed to make 200 of them, talking about it, joking around. And uh, when they showed up, Larry called over to Marco Benelli and says, uh, hey, I got a container in. He says, before I could say anything else, Marco laughed and says, ah, how do you like your fast little bike? So that's it, man. 200 between two friends joking around. And what, this was, was, a survivor. what was their inspiration? That What inspired them? Because of the competition, right? Yeah, the competition because they had a 65 and Honda had the CT70 coming out, the Trail 90, and they just wanted a little bike that had a little more oomph. But 180, they went a little overboard. Can you imagine this, guys? A 182 stroke. They only shipped over one container load of 200, and I guess most of them got totaled because the kids would just flip them, right? Can you imagine me being a 12-year-old kid getting on this? Little 182, 180 cc two stroke, and you saw how fast the fifties were. This thing's probably putting down in the teens horsepower wise, right? They they, they uh, tested it when it came over from the motorcycle magazine. Can you roll the forward a little bit? The official speed on it was sixty seven miles an hour. <laughs> Nineteen seventy. Sixty seven miles an hour, guys, with the little tiny wheels. Uh, yeah, this is probably one of the few that didn't that doesn't have the forks smashed in and the frame all bent. But uh, very very cool piece. Can't wait to hear this thing run. This is the first motocross bike that had KTM on it, on the motor, back when KTM was trying to do a hostile takeover of John Penton's company. <laughs> nice collection of vintage iron over here, mopeds, Yamahas, Hondas, Honda Expresses, all kinds of Benellis and you name it. Just And then rows and rows and rows of chambers. DKW with the leading link suspension. Really cool pieces over here. Here's a... Um, a couple Harleys and a Pook. And uh, Gorelli, another Gorelli, another Gorelli, another Gorelli, another Gorelli, another Gorelli, Gorelli, and a Moto Guzzi. And the cool thing is, That's this cool. one has the same exact engine as that silver one, the Dingo engine. 
So that's the identical kickstart engine. You know, not a lot of survivors here because I think Moto Guzzi, in, in hindsight, regretted putting it in a little moped body. So when they probably found their lime greens, they just destroyed them. They said, we don't need those out there in the market anymore. Okay. <laughs> What's this right here? That's an Intermoto Gloria, just another Italian moped from the 70s. What a cool decal. Intra, Intra Motor Gloria, Verona. Wow. A Peugeot. And what's this one right here? A that's, a, that's a Cimati, another Italian moped. Cimati. Oh, this is a cool one. This is a Donacelli. Very rare to see in the U.S. because there's a clamp right here, and you can undo it, and the whole moped folds in half to put in their little cars. Like Honda's little suitcase motorcycles, right? Yeah, that's their version. So the competition between Honda and uh, the Italian manufacturers is what inspired a lot. A couple of more Honda 50s over here. MB5. MB5. 50cc, 5-speed, air-cooled. Goes about 60 mile an hour stock, but we put a performance pipe on that. That's meant to do true grit up in Georgia. Not too many of these survived, did they? Not too many. They made them in black, they made them in red. One year only. Chain run. That's the coolest thing I've ever seen. The whole motor move. Look at the chain top. Yep. I never seen that before in my whole damn life. That's incredible. It's called a variator. Now, how does it, and why does it do that? So it has a chain drive until it hits a certain speed. Weights uh, fly to the outside because of the speed. It engages the pulley, and then once it lifts it up, it gives it like another second gear. It smells great. Where's that ethanol free fuel with some kind of two stroke mix? Exactly, at 92 ethanol free. It smells fantastic. Better than coffee in the morning. A couple of badass. This is a, this is a progression. Look at that thing, those are nasty. What is this monster right here? It's like a death trap. It's like Darth, this is Darth Vader's moped right here. This is a Darth Vader one, right? It's a, probably like a, what is this, a 70 cc or something? Yeah. We're going to have to start that. That has a homemade chamber pipe. That thing's like a fucking rocket ship, man. Yeah, that, that sounds about the ball. Oops, go dropped another right. F-bomb. Sorry. Junior, edit that out, please. There's a story behind this one, too. It has something to do with Cosmo. Guy was a big inspiration for Steve starting this business and has been a mentor of his and Hook them up with some unobtainium, really cool stuff like this scooter here, which is a whole story behind that little rocket ship. They're just fun, and they're inexpensive, they're affordable, and they're fun. And that's what it's all supposed to be about, guys, right? So don't underestimate how much fun these little these little mopeds can be, man. If you know, if you they're super easy to work on. Most of them are two strokes. You can probably rebuild the motor. They're from some of your more better known brands like Honda, Yamaha. Uh, and then you've got Pooks. That's a sporty looking little thing. Look at that thing. Another Pook. Another Pook. That's a Pook Magnum. Very cool. And that one, the brown seat over there is pretty sharp too. This is an incredible collection. The largest collection of, of unobtainium mopeds I've ever seen. This is Steve's personal rocket ship. So you know this one's got to be something special. He's got it all done up with the piggyback gold shocks and the black rims and Come on, very cool. <laughs>
Watch, it's gonna hit the power band. When it hits the power band, it'll just start screaming. You didn't get, get it in the power band yet. He's way down the other end of the street. He's gonna come ripping down here, watch this. Just caught second gear, you hear that? He ain't even on the pipe yet. He's doing about 50 miles an hour right now. Oh, too bad he had to shut it off. I want to hear that thing screaming. Idiot, stop before he pulls out in the traffic. This brake's making it a little easier. That one's got some... one you got out of all of them? No, we can go show them the faster ones. But this is the most comfortable, most reliable. It looks badass too, for what it's worth, you know? It just goes 55 all day. Seven, you know, one gallon of gas gets you 60 miles in a hurry. So you get 60 miles in a gallon? Yeah. Maybe a little less than that kid. Very cool. <laughs> Ripper. Ripper. <laughs> Look at this thing. Very fun. That's what it's all about. And uh, he's out in California. Tomahawk tuning built the motor on that? They're the ones who built it out in California. They're known for their motor mechanics. They race them over in France. But uh, he did that for the previous owner and uh, great work by them. Most Boom. consistent hope that I have. Always starts first kick and uh, it rips. How many horsepower do you figure it's putting down? I don't even know, man. I just know it's fast as shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you, when you, you want, that's got to be half mile all the way down there. You caught second gear and it didn't start really ripping until you got in the power band exactly and you get on the pipe. Right. And the amazing thing, and I don't know how they do it on this, but it's a one speed. And I swear once you get up to about 35 mile an hour, it's as if it shifts. So I don't know if that's when it's hitting on the pipe or what. But uh, it catches at about 40 uh, and gets to 55 real quick. It has a, once it catches a power band yeah, and exactly it starts right. breathing, right? Yeah. Exactly right, man. Made by Tomos, called a Revival. Has a two-speed automatic. They tried to make it look like a Harley with all these fake plastics and everything else. So what we did was break it apart. I'll fast forward to the good stuff. Wow, doesn't even look like the same, the same. So we kept machine. the same tubular frame. We kept the same engine. We put a bigger kit on it. Nice we got works. a Moto Marini Sebring, which was a very rare moped over in Italy. We put that tank on it, put a vintage looking cafe seat, took off all the fenders. Is that faster than the one you were just on? Yes, this bike here better go 70. So that's gonna be your next one, and then you're gonna hand this one down to your that, son? And I'm gonna hand the black one down to my son, that's right. He's a lucky kid. This one sits up higher, it has the disc brakes, has the three and I a quarter. I love the way that looks, the, the brown saddle, yeah. the red, white, and blue, it's just badass. Three and a quarter inch back wheels, two and seven, two and three quarters front. I feel like a little cafe racer. So it's beefy, it sits up high, and uh, that's the new one, man, coming next week. That's Where is it? Uh, in my mechanics, so um, he's gonna finish it oh, up in your over shop in St. Pete. What's no, a different shop okay. over in St. Pete. My, you have two uh, shops? Yep, and uh, all the mopeds are done by David Fox, and uh, he's the mastermind of all these customs. He did the Bucks bike. He did the, uh, the Batavolt that we changed up. And um, if you want to see one last product, 1978 Batavus Regency, top tank moped. Uh, at the time, their selling point was it's a three-gallon tank. You could go uh, um, 150 miles on one tank. So... We start chopping it up, and I'm just going to fast forward to where it is today. Uh, here's where it is today. We converted this to an electric bike. We put five-star rims on it. We have a center drive electric engine, 3,000 continuous watts. We kept the pedals on it, and we put a 1968 Benelli tank. Eventually, this bike will be all silver and uh, black. How fast will it be? 
Um, it'll be electric. It'll have a range of about 50 to 60 miles, and it should be a 60 mile an hour bike. Very cool. Sneak up on everybody with that one. All electric, man. It's all electric, so what do, what do you call that one? Uh, silent killer. Silent killer. <laughs> uh, very appropriate. Yeah. Guys, this is a really special piece. Uh, the only I've ever heard of nitrous oxide injected scooter. Well, what's the scoop on this one? Yeah, this was brought in by Larry Weiss at Cosmopolitan Motors. PGO was a company, 2003, wanted to enter the U.S. market. Larry said, you better make me something special. So they got the permission for Repsol, put Valentini Rossi, who was a two-time GP champion, put a handmade chrome pipe on it, all chrome things. But the beauty of it was they had the nitrous oxide bottle here in the bottom. Uh, you see oh the, the go button right here. <laughs> they would arm it. They'd hit it. And um, they only took it to the track. They rode it around, and I asked him, why'd you take off the nitrous? He said, our professional riders, whenever they hit it, they, uh, the front end took off, scared the heck out of them, man. So, that's <laughs> yeah. a one-on-one, -on -one, and uh, Jay Lennon was supposed to buy it, but uh, I threatened Larry that it'd be bad karma if he did that, so he was generous enough to sell it to me. That's awesome. That's a cool piece. Are you ever going to put the nitrous on it and give it for a rip? I think we have to. Yeah, uh, the, <laughs> it must have. The thing about this bike, even without the nitrous, uh, I weigh 230. I sat on it, I put my chest down, it only goes, it starts to engage at 9,000 RPMs is when it starts to launch. And uh, the wheelie still took off with me on it like this without nitrous. That's, so, without, uh, that's without nitrous. Huh? That's without what? nitrous. So uh, it's going to be a fun ride if we put her back on. Freaking awesome. You have to. Yeah. You pretty much have to. <laughs> you definitely got to do a video of that. This is a Cosmo Cup. So Cosmopolitan Motors filed trials races starting in the 79. They were the importers of Montessa motorcycles back when Montessa made the shift to focus on trials. Uh, this shows the best rider that Cosmo had in their finish from 79 all the way up into uh, the year 2000. So That's a really special piece to you because your friend gave you that, right? Yeah, that came from Larry Weiss. Now 92, still in Philadelphia, still representing Cosmo. Very cool. In a room full of awesome Benelli's and just awesome. Look at that little thing. Is that the coolest thing?